Magvanen, folks. Today we have yet another very interesting looking integral that looks like the result of something a math nerd would just cook up when he's bored. That's right, just throw together some functions and then toss over an integral sign and there you go. You will have the integral from 0 to pi of x times log of 1 minus e to the i x dx. But the result of this integral, which is due to the result of, which is the result of my boredom, the result is quite beautiful. It is aesthetically very pleasing and very unexpected. So enough talk, let's try to evaluate this thing. So we have x times the logarithm of 1 minus e to the i x, where i is of course the imaginary unit. Yes, I think about complex numbers when I'm bored. What else am I supposed to do? So let's recall what the logarithm of a complex number is because that's really interesting. The logarithm of a complex number z, specifically the principal logarithm, equals the logarithm of its absolute value plus i times its principal argument. Now in this case, I have z equal to 1 minus e to the i x, so I'm going to be interested in its modulus and its absolute value. Now by Euler's formula, I can expand this as 1 minus cosine x minus i times sine x. So the absolute value of 1 minus e to the i x is just going to be the root of the sum of squares of its real part, that's 1 minus cosine x, and the imaginary part, that is sine of x. Now expanding the square yields 1 plus cosine square x plus rather minus 2 cosine x plus sine square x and that's quite nice because cosine square plus sine square oh dear me i forgot to lock the screen zoom that was very unsettling so cosine square plus sine square is one so we have one plus one which is two nowadays so we have two minus two times cosine x in other words i can factor out the root two and i have root one minus cosine x that doesn't look like a lot, but thankfully we have really cool double angle formula, formulae for the cosine function. And the one I'd like to use in this case is one where you have a negative sign with the cosine of the double angle. So that yields two sine square x over two, which is awesome because then you have root two times root two, which is of course two. And of course you have the square root and the square functions canceling out. So we have sine of x over two. Okay, cool. So that's the absolute value of our complex number. That's one minus e to the i theta. And now we're interested in its principal argument. Now the argument of one minus e to the i theta, or x in this case, is pretty straightforward. That is the arc tangent of its imaginary part, which is negative sine x over the real part, which is 1 minus cosine x. And arctangent is just an odd function, so we can take out the negative sign. And we can expand the numerator and denominator, again using double angle formulae. So we have 2 sine of x over 2 times cosine of x over 2 over, again, I need 2 sine square x over 2, resulting in some nice cancellation. We even get rid of one of the signs and we're left with negative arctangent of cotangent of x over 2. Okay, cool. That is awesome because we can get tangent of x over 2 really easily by recalling that the arctangent of z plus the arctangent terribly, sorry about that, of 1 over z equals pi over 2. So that means... All we have to do is set z here equal to cotangent of x over 2, and then we have arctangent of cotangent of x over 2. Rather, I'll just set z here equal to tangent of x over 2. This thing equals pi over 2 minus arctangent of tangent of x over 2. Terribly sorry about that. And the, the tangent and arctangent, of course, cancel out yielding pi over 2 minus x over 2. Okay, cool. There's a negative sign outside, so I can just switch up the order. So the argument of 1 minus e to the i theta is going to be x over 2 minus pi over 2. 
And now for our return to the target integral. So we need a logarithm of 1 minus e to the i theta, and we see that that does equal the logarithm of the absolute value, the absolute value being 2 times sine of x over 2. And using log properties, I can write this as log 2 plus log of sine of x over 2. Then we have the imaginary part, which is x over 2, terribly sorry about that, minus pi over 2. And we need to multiply this thing by x and then integrate from 0 to pi. And that gives us the target integral i, which is the integral from 0 to pi of, let's see, we do have x, but we have x times log 2 terribly, sorry about that, minus, um, yeah, you're going to have an x term over here as well. So that's minus i times pi over 2. Then we have i times the integral from 0 to pi of x times x being x squared over 2. So that's just going to be a 1 half outside. Then finally, we have the integral from 0 to pi of x times log of sine x over 2. Terribly sorry about that. And yes, I have omitted the dx terms. Terribly sorry about that as well. I'll try not to do that for the remainder of the video. I think I've triggered people enough, at least for one video. So let me just evaluate these things really quick. So x squared over 2 results in a pi squared over 2 times a log 2 minus i times pi over 2. And for the other integral, we have i over 6 times x cubed, 0 to pi. So that is i pi cubed over 6 plus the integral from 0 to pi of x log sine of x over 2 dx. Okay, cool. Now, of course, I could clean this up a bit more, but I'll defer that to later. Right now, I'd like to first evaluate the integral involving the log of the sine function, because to evaluate it, we need one of my all-time favorite series expansions, and that is the logarithm of sine x which can be expanded as negative log 2 minus the sum over k from 1 to infinity of cosine of 2kx over k, which is convenient because x here is not really x, it's x over 2. So multiplying log of sine of x over 2 by x and then integrating from 0 to pi, we get, don't worry, I remember, minus integral or minus log 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of x dx minus, I'll switch up the order of the integration and summation operators here to get the sum over k from 1 to infinity. 1 over k integral 0 to pi x times cosine of 2kx. Rather wait, we have cosine of kx because the 2 cancels out with the 1 half dx. So the result here would be, again, I will have a negative pi squared over 2 log 2 term, which might come in handy later. Yeah, there's actually going to be some cancellation. Everything's coming together now. And then we have sum over k from 1 to infinity, 1 over k times some stuff that can be evaluated using integration by parts. So we have, what exactly? Oh, yeah. On integrating, we have x times the sine of kx over k, limits being 0 and pi. Now, as x approaches 0 or x approaches pi, we have sine of k times pi, k being a positive integer, just collapsing to 0, so we can get rid of that completely. And then we have a negative sine, 1 over k integral 0 to pi, derivative of x is 1. And then we have sine of kx Okay, cool. So the result is negative pi squared over 2 log 2 minus the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k times what exactly? We have the antiderivative for sine is negative cosine. So we have cosine of kx over k squared. I believe, oh yeah, k squared, negative signs canceling out, the limits are 0 and pi. And I'll introduce another negative sign just to get, just to switch up the order of these limits. So we have negative pi squared over 2, log 2, plus the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k cubed 
times cosine 0 is 1, and cosine of k times pi is negative 1 to the k. So that means whenever k is even, we have 1 minus 1, which is 0. But when k is odd, then we have a factor of 2, which is dope. So we're left with negative pi squared over 2 log 2 plus the sum over k from 1 to infinity. Rather, I'll switch to the index variable n now, where k equals 2n minus 1 cubed over 2. So I'll take that 2 outside. Now, this sum here is closely related to Apery's constant, or zeta 3. And we'll evaluate that right now, once I can actually draw this properly. Okay, cool. Now, zeta 3, which is the sum over k of 1 over k cubed, if I decompose this into a sum over even integers and a sum over odd integers, then in that case, I have the sum over n from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n cubed plus a sum over n from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n minus 1 cubed, which is exactly what our target sum is. Now the left hand side over here, this is of course zeta 3, and on the right we have 1 eighth, the sum over k from the sum over n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed, which is again zeta 3. So we have 1 eighth of zeta 3 plus our target sum. But this implies that the sum over n from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n minus 1 cubed terribly. Sorry about that. There's something even worse with my handwriting today than usual. Again, terribly. Sorry about that. Slightly better. OCD kicking in. And the result is 7 eighths of Apery's constant. So for my target integral, I'll just replace the sum with 7 eighths of zeta 3 multiplied by 2. So then we have the integral from 0 to pi of x times log of sine x over 2 equal to negative pi squared over 2 log 2 plus 7 quarters of zeta 3. Yes, I know there's a dx term over there. But to be honest, I mean, it's trivial that we are integrating with respect to x because I don't see any other variables over here. So what on earth were we supposed to do next? Oh yeah, we were supposed to gather together our results. So we have this result that is pretty easy to remember. And then we have the result for our target integral. Let me just copy this down there. So copy and paste here. I'll introduce a different color because why the hell not? So our result is pi squared over 2 log 2 minus i pi cubed over 4 plus i pi cubed over 6. Okay, this is the hard part now. So I carefully factor out the i pi cubed over 2 with the negative sign, okay, with the negative. Don't worry, bro, you got this, you got this. So you got one half, okay, one half, one quarter. Turns into one half, then you have a one third with a negative sign, of course. One half minus, oh dear me. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's one over six, hell yeah, one over six. I got this, I got this. That was close. Anyway, then the result over here is a negative pi squared over two log two plus 7 quarters of zeta 3. There is some cancellation taking place. So finally, we have uh, zeta 3, 7 quarters of zeta 3, that is, minus i pi cubed over 12, which is pretty easy to relate to another value of the zeta function, and that is zeta 2. So we have 7 quarters of zeta 3, minus i over 2, terribly sorry about that, i over 2 times, rather, i pi over 2 times pi squared over 6, which is, of course, zeta 2. So it's a beautiful result involving pi, the imaginary unit, zeta 2, and zeta 3. Honorable, num honorable mentions to the numbers 7, 4, and 2, Wait, that's just 7 and 2 because 4 is 2 squared. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Drop me a follow on Instagram as well. 
Thank you. See you next time.